This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, May the 10th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Damien the Leper, a.k.a. St. Damien of Molokai, born Damien de Wooster in north-central Belgium in 1840. He joined up with the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary and was ordained as a priest. He left for Hawaii in 1873 when he was in his early 30s. He set up shop in a gigantic leper colony, and his religious duties always came first. He offered mass, buried the dead, taught catechism, and made converts. He also built a reservoir, several hospitals, and schools, and established leadership structures, which lasted as long as the colony did. He personally cared for the sick and made a devotion of constructing caskets for the dead. After 11 years or so, Damien had a little accident. He was splashed with boiling water and didn't feel it. It was then that he realized that he had contracted leprosy, which we now call Hansen's disease. That meant that, like the local Hawaiians, he was forbidden from leaving the colony or having any interaction with outsiders. As his death approached, he very much wanted to go to confession, as he hadn't been able to do so for a long time. A supply ship was transporting a priest who agreed to hear his confession, but the captain refused to allow Father Damien on board. So he took a dinghy to the side of the ship and shouted his final confession from the water up to the priest who stood at the edge of the boat. He died at the age of 49 in 1889 and was canonized by Pope Benedict in 2009. Today in 1774, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette became king and queen of France and Navarre. Both were 19 and both had been preparing for this moment their entire lives. Louis was well-trained, he was smart, and he had done an excellent job as the Dauphin. Marie Antoinette, too, was very well-prepared. She understood court life, she understood her role within it, she understood the importance of various symbolic gestures. Sadly, neither was able to make a decision and stick to it, and neither was able to comprehend just how precarious their position was in the face of a rising anti-monarchy mentality among the French in particular, but really all over Europe. The glorious revolution in England had settled down, but it had not come out of nowhere. Going back to Louis XIV, the opulence of the royals, meant to be a symbol of French power to other nations, had become an abomination to the natives. Marie Antoinette, trained in the former understanding and oblivious to the latter, was given as a gift a country estate named La Petite Trinon. The man on the street believed that she had plastered the walls with gold and diamonds. And the homme de la rue told these stories while choking down moldy bread before and after long days of work. Louis and Marie Antoinette didn't have a happy ending, but they did have a very happy beginning today in 1774. A few days ago, on the 7th of May, we remembered the birthday of Edwin Land, who founded Polaroid and discovered a cheap technique for aligning crystals on paper, which brought photography to the masses. Today is the birthday in 1930 of George E. Smith. Born in upstate New York, he finished his doctorate at the University of Chicago with a dissertation that was eight pages long. Unbelievably short. Ten years later, in 1969, he and a man named Willard Boyle invented the charge-coupled device, abbreviated the CCD. This is the thing that makes digital photography possible. He won the Nobel for it in 2009. Smith's invention changed photography in a fundamental way. While Land made it cheap and easy possible, Smith set the stage for it to become utterly ubiquitous. Now, certainly it was the smartphone that brought the CCD to its full potential, and so we have to pass a little credit to Steve Jobs and his team as well. Still, George E. Smith and Edwin Land were both pioneers of photography, and both born in these first few weeks of May. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.